Welcome, welcome, welcome to the very first episode of the Mark Jackson Show. I'm honored to be here. It is a thrill. If you don't know, I am Mark Jackson, your host. This is my co-host, Mark Jackson II, affectionately known as Blue. He's more than a name. He's more than my son. Tell him who you are. Well, I'm a... I, it's a big deal to be your son, Dad. I don't want to diminish that, so I, I love you a lot. You, you, you my mentor, you my my father, so I don't want to diminish that. I love you too. Son. But on, on top of that, I, I am a, a singer, songwriter, producer. I've worked with uh, many artists that you may know. I uh, I played for Coach Rick Pitino, who coached my father also at University of Louisville, so I have a little bit of a knowledge when it comes to this game. But I'm just overall grateful to be here, and I'm excited to, to start this with you, Dad. Man, I'm proud. You made me get emotional. If you don't know, breaking news, I'm a crier. So I'm, I, I cry at drop of a dime. And, uh, don't do it. That's a great. I won't. It's do too that. early to yeah, cry. Yeah, don't yeah, shed yeah, the yeah. tears yet. Can't don't go. shed the tears yet. Two minutes in, I'm crying. No, we can't do that. Yeah, hold on to it. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Calm down. We got you. <laughs> but that's that, that, that's awesome because you, you're not just a guy sitting here as my son. You've lived basketball. You've played basketball. You've accomplished dreams, and then some dreams have fallen short. But I, I'm proud and honored to be hosting this show with you. Mm, I'm proud too. So, what makes you today, right now, at this moment? decide to venture out into the podcast realm or into this different digital space. I've watched you do broadcasting. I've watched you play in the NBA. What is What went into your decision to do this at this time? Well, if you don't know, I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> that'll do it. That'll make you make, that'll make, you make an a adjustment at an Audible real fast. So uh, that happened. And then what, what also happened was two legends out of New York, out of New York City, two guys from Harlem, uh, you never know your impact thing. And when I got fired, they took my firing personal. And they, they basically uh, had a vision. And they proposed that vision to me, two guys by the name of Cam and Mace, who's making a historic run, but it is what it is, changing the game of how we cover sports. I'm honored to call them partners, and even more honored to call them friends and family. They, uh, they just made a pitch, made a pitch, made a pitch, didn't take no for an answer believed in me, and um, I'm thrilled to join them and, and try to create my own history and doing it with, with you. So this is an opportunity that I really was looking forward to once once they set, sold it to me. And I like the idea of covering sports and being able to say the player did something right or wrong, the coach did something right or wrong, and the referee did something right or wrong. And I can say that about the ref and not have to worry about having a meeting or getting a call. That's that's a beautiful luxury. No, I love watching y'all. I love watching y'all, man. You, when you get with Cam and Mace, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And in all honesty, I grew up listening to them. So uh, they didn't play basketball, but when I look at you, I see 17-year vet, Hall of Fame, everything that your accolades are. But musically, when I see Cam and Mace, I'm like, man, these dudes is Hall of Fame, legends, like legit. First name basis. And they'll get mad at you, by the way. Let me just stop wow. right there and park parenthetically because yeah. – They'll get mad at you because they did play basketball. I don't know if you heard or seen the video. Cam had a wide open mace in Madison Square Garden to win a championship and did not pass the basketball, chucked up a bad shot, and basically they lost at the buzzer. So they are legit basketball players and, and very good ones. Very good? Very good. All right, I'm going to take it from you. Yeah. I got to see it one day, though. We might have to go play two on two. No, they, don't, they don't want that smoke. You're right. <laughs> You're right. You're right. You know that. <laughs> Let's take, a, let's take a moment and shout out our sponsors really quickly. We're brought to you by the great folks at Underdog Fantasy. You should click on the link in the description below and use the promo code MARK, M-A-R-K. Make a deposit of up to $100 and Underdog Fantasy will match it. You got, hold on, you have a beautiful future ahead of you. <laughs> Thank I, you. I can spot talent. I used to work with this guy named Jeffrey Van Gundy, a little guy. Mm -hmm. And I, I told him from day one, I said, you're going to be special in this business. Yeah. He didn't believe me. And he turned out having the longest run of calling NBA Finals in history of, of sports. So uh, he, I, I see some of that in you. I remind you of, of Coach Jeff? I didn't say that. But what, hold on. You you want to call him Coach Jeff? What's, I could call He's not Coach Jeff. Yes, I got respect no, I, I like the respect level. Yeah, I, I, let's keep that coach, consistent across the board. Coach Van Gundy. Yeah, he's a legend. You got to respect the coach. I, but I do see I saw the brilliance and the greatness when I've worked with him, and I'm getting that same vibe right now. Who else do I remind you of? Uh, a lot of different people. Uh, my my dad, 
He was cool. Yeah. He was smooth. Uh, he didn't have braids. He no. didn't have green eyes. Uh, he would probably, I'd have a lot more brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you, I, I'm, I'm honored to work with you. And I, I, I sense, I get a feel of the, the greatness that's in you and what's to come. Speaking of, of your father, my grandfather, what would you like for me to call you as we do this show, as we embark on this? You want me to call you dad, pops, Mark? Mark. Mark. Have you? <laughs> Mark. Mark is, Mark is nice, man. I got a nice ring to it. I've, had, I've heard Mark my whole life. No, it is nice. That's why yeah. I named you it. But yeah. I, I got a question. Other than going to your room, storming to your room, upset when you're on punishment, and I'm sure you said some things in your room with the door closed, you know, laying on the bed frustrated and mad. But other than that, you've been consistent from day one in calling me dad. That has a beautiful ring and it brings me joy. I, I say let's, let's stick to that. I can, I can, I can understand that. Because being, being a father, I hear, I hear Noah say, Dad. He says, he really says, Dad, Dad. But oh, he, oh, give me a time out. Says, give me a time out. Give me a time out. What does he say? He said, Dad, Dad. <laughs> he said it loud, too. And I love it. Every time I hear him yeah. say it, it, it makes something in my heart. So yeah. I, so you, I, you earned it. Yeah, you earned it. You earned so, it, Dad. You earned it, Dad. I appreciate it. Yeah. No, no Dad, Dad. Dad huh? is No, nah, not Dad, Dad. I ain't calling you no Dad, Dad. <laughs> After shut down the show, I got to call you Dad, Dad. So... When, in your words, what would you say this show is going to be? That's a great question. It's going to be a show that breaks down basketball, basketball games, basketball issues. It's going to be sharp and on point with the analytical side and analysis of playoff games individually or collectively by teams, dealing with expert issues and hot topics. We're going to be dealing with not just basketball, too. If there's a topic that jumps out that the streets are talking about, we're going to attack that and attack that comfortably. Um, what we're not going to be is uh, controversial. We're, we're not going to back away from the big-time topics or big-time issues, but we're not going to start no mess. And we're not going to tolerate starting mess and continuing mess. We want to be bringing good news, hot topics, fresh takes, and, and have fun with it. And then we're going to have some quality guests. Uh, that come in and visit and drop in and uh, sit at the table and sit at the couch and have a good time breaking bread and telling some great stories from their angle. So I'm excited about the different look that this show is going to bring to, to this to this area and uh, thrilled, thrilled to do just that. But we're not going to be, you know, here to uh, get clickbait and, and, and start some nonsense. That's not who we are and that's not who we're going to be. And I do love the dynamic of father and son. I do think that that is something that's very unique. Um, just us being able to be in this environment and hash out whatever our differences is in opinions. Oh, you and, got beef with me? What is no, going on? No, I'm just saying. I, I know it's coming. all sorts of news. I, you know me my whole life. I know you my whole life. You know we're not going to agree with everything. No, but that's different than breaking, you know, beef and issues. No, we don't got no beef. Oh, okay. I love you. I love you. You, you know? got to understand we're dealing with some folks that might no, try to no, no, no. decipher I'm, what we're saying. No, no. I'm saying this is an opportunity for us to demonstrate uh, a healthy father-son Absolutely. relationship. Absolutely. And it's meaningful to see um, a man as yourself have a relationship with his son and sit in front of everybody and be able to break down these no types question. of things. It's and a wonderful say I love dynamic. You yeah, yeah that's, that's important. It's beautiful. That's important. I, I, I remember I had an incredible dad married to my mom for 40 years and, and it wasn't until the last six years of his life I knew he loved me but he never said it because old school guys look like us didn't say it it wasn't until he got sick that he realized how easy it was to say I love you and and I think we people watching need to realize and see how easy it is to say I love you and have an affectionate warm caring proud relationship with your family so it's awesome I held it tight. I held it. Yeah, we was yeah, close to the tears, y'all. I'm, I'm a tear drop. Y'all don't, y'all don't know him as well as I do. We was real close to the tears. Yeah, I held it. Now. I, I held it. I got it. It's, it's, it's on its way. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> no, that's beautiful. It's really beautiful. In other news, Dad, LeBron, <clears throat> King James, man, is winding down his career. We watched him this week say he's not sure if he wants to do a farewell tour or just flayed the black. What's your opinion on that? <laughs> My opinion on him saying that? Yeah. That's hilarious. What's your opinion? No, no, that's absolutely hilarious. This is the guy that had a whole show to, to announce his decision to go to Miami. This is a guy that the, the cameras follow his entire career. This is a guy that from day one did everything with a, with, with a bang uh, 
and and now he's. You really believe? I, I might be wrong. There's a one percent chance I'm wrong, but I would bet the house and everything that I own that he's going out on a farewell tour and getting acknowledged. And guess what? He deserves that. But let's not get it twisted. He is going out uh, with, with some attention and the bright lights and the flares and the fireworks and all those things. Uh, that that that's the that's the LeBron James we know. And I know you love him, and I love him too. You got to admit that he's not going out just saying farewell in, in a tweet or facts. I agree with that. The only way LeBron is saying farewell is if he plans on coming back from retirement in a, a year or two later, like on some WWE type stuff, like I'm back. No, I don't see that. That's not going to happen, but that's the only way he just leaves. Now, everything that you said, I agree. He does deserve a farewell tour, but I think that all the, all the, everything that you said is not even enough for what LeBron would need. I don't think that we've seen a player of his stature in this time of, of farewell tours. It should be a show every city that he goes to if there is a farewell tour. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of Kobe Bryant? Yeah. You ever heard of Tim Duncan? Of I mean, we, we, there's going to be another great after LeBron. There were some greats before him, and there's going to be some after. He deserves... A parade. He deserves acknowledgement. He deserves different teams to acknowledge him and let's let's celebrate and give him the rocking chair and all those things. He he certainly deserves that. But what else are you saying he he deserves? Nah, we got to roll out the red carpet. I want the behind the scene camera. If LeBron is oh, saying yeah, I'm retiring next year, I want the behind the scene cameras every game. I want the lives. I want the stories. I want everything. The NBA does a fine job at doing just that. You will get all of that in your day of the. The, the, um, uh, the, the Jordan documentary or the Kobe documentary or the Isaiah with Detroit Pistons documentary, that day is going to come where we have all the footage behind the scenes of, of LeBron James. And even we, I'm pretty positive we'll have one of Steph Curry. So those, those, those days will come. Mm -hmm. Let's not rush it. But the point is, he is going to want to leave with everybody acknowledging his greatness and his impact, and deservedly so, his impact on society and the game. He's, he's changed the game, not from a basketball standpoint only. He's changed the game from a business standpoint. Absolutely. He has changed it where now these guys understand. I can remember being on, a, on the New York Knicks with Patrick Ewing, the franchise player. We was playing the Phoenix Suns, and we went to practice. and we was, The bus was outside, and Patrick goes up to the head coach, and he goes, uh, I think I'm going to drive to the, to the arena and meet y'all at practice. And then because after practice, I'm going somewhere else. And the coach looked at him, the late, late John McLeod, looks at Patrick Ewing and goes, big fella, I want you on the big bus. <laughs> and Patrick Ewing just comes down the lane of the bus, like steaming mad, he's on the bus. I'm, I'm like, do you realize you're Pat Ewing? What is he going to do if you drive to the arena? He's not benching you. You're not getting suspended. You'll be able, you're going to start. You're going to get 30 and everything will be fine. But he didn't understand the power he had. And I think we, don't, we no longer have that moment because LeBron James' impact Guys, all of a sudden, and, and it's important to utilize it the right way, but guys understand the power that they have. So with LeBron retiring soon, who's next up? Who takes that role? I think we got several guys that, that, that are in position to take that role. And it's not a role that we just anoint. It's a, it's a role that you, you, you have to grab that, that crown. And LeBron certainly did it from Kobe, and Kobe did it from Michael, and Michael and, and did it from Magic and, and, and Larry, and they did it from Dr. J. So on and on and on. You just don't say, well, this guy's the next guy. I can tell you a handful of guys that's in the discussion. So it's not who's the best players. You also have to be young enough to be able to be on a trajectory to have sustained greatness. And these guys have, I believe, that the Joker is young enough, healthy enough, durable enough. I believe that Jason Tatum, young enough, impactful enough. I believe that Luka Doncic is another guy, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Those four guys, along with, I mean, you could say a guy like Shea Gilgamesh, Alexander, Anthony Edwards, they're young. These other guys have had sustained greatness for a longer period, even though it's early in their career. They've won MVPs uh, in the discussion. So I, I'd say those four guys are four guys to watch. And Wimby is a guy that, you know, early on, you look at what he's doing, he's incredible. He is absolutely incredible, generational talent. You just ran down every player, Dad. Who is the who is next, man? Give me a guess. You sound like Cam and Mace now. 
You ran down every player. No, you sound you like just Cameron. went on a love tour <laughs> across the Eastern and West Western Conference playoffs. You got to give me, give me, give me two. Give me two. Okay, I'll give you two. Oh, man, two. I'm going to say Luca. And I'm going to say Joker and, and, and Giannis and Tatum. Man, what's going on? what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? You, you said give you two. I, I gave you, you two me... at a time. Man, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, you got to you, you can't just. We're talking about four hundred and fifty, the four hundred and fifty greatest players in the world. You're telling me to grab one or two players and say that the next. It's too many great ones. I, I, I don't want to leave anybody out. Not for political purposes, but they've earned that's the right different. to be in the discussion. At least have their name mentioned as to be the next guy. I think one person that you that you mentioned that is a uh, maybe an awkward pick for that next guy is SGA. I really love his game, and I think that he is to me he's the best point guard in the league today. To me, today, not taking away from Steph what he's done. Steph's career wise is is untouchable, but today on a one game basis, <clears throat> SGA is is. Hard to top to me. Are you counting Luke as a point guard? Great point. Great point. You could make a career out of this. You're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. I try. You're pretty but, good. But that, that shows you that the, the game is in tremendous hands. The talent is at an all time great level. The skill is at an all time great level. And it's fun to watch. It is fun to watch. When you got a guy like Shea, who was traded for a big time future Hall of Fame in Paul George. And the, the, the Clippers understood what they were giving away. And he has responded in a big way, starting in the Western Conference All-Star game and impacting a guy that can be that's, that should be and will be in the MVP discussion. It, it's a fun time to be an NBA fan. So we're in the home stretch <clears throat> of the season. What's your favorite storylines coming up? Or what teams are you looking out for? I'm enjoying J.J. Redick and... Pat Beverly and Doc Rivers. I mean, that's some that's some good stuff. They should they should that's have a, great, right? They should have they should have a three man booth and just go for it. I, I'm really enjoying that that side of what we're getting from the beef or the issues or the drama. It's fun, but in all seriousness, I I I look at the Western Conference and it is absolutely loaded. Who's going to come out of the Western Conference? Um, and to me, Styles makes fights. So it's going to be about matchups. You can easily pick a team today, but if they play against a team in the first or second round that they don't match up well with, they can be eliminated. The one team that's consistent, that's proven is the Denver Nuggets. They won a championship. They have the clear-cut two best players and outstanding role players. They're extremely well coached. We know what to get. we're going to get from them. But the Western Conference is absolutely loaded. The other thing I look at, the Eastern Conference. Great stories with the Boston Celtics. Uh, dominant at home, two superstars, or two, two, two guys that's young, that's proven. They add Christoph Porzingis, a big guy that can stretch the three-point line, protect the, the, the rim, and also post up and give them some post play. And I, I think as much as we, we joke about what the Bucks are doing and the hard times that they've fallen on, <clears throat> I wouldn't want to face Giannis Antetokounmpo or Dame Dollar in a playoff series with Doc Rivers as the coach and, and, and that team's success. They're still a dangerous team. I think other teams are involved. So I think for the first time in a long time, it is absolutely wide open. Where before you could say, well, there's four teams that have a chance to win. I think anybody can be beaten and anybody with a handful of teams have a chance to, at the end of the day, be, be holding the trophy. I think for me, a storyline that stands out is I love, I love the Clippers. I love the fact that there are two players who are totally counted out on that team, and James Harden and Russell Westbrook, in different portions of their career. But to see them come together on the same team and turn around, even Ty Lue has been doubted this year as a coach, has been questioned this year as a coach. So the resiliency that I've seen from them, it makes me wonder what's the height that they can get to. You make a great point, because I remember <clears throat> last year calling a game or, or two years ago, whenever Russell Westbrook was on the Lakers. And sitting courtside, <clears throat> calling the game, it's a Laker fan sitting right in the front row. 
loyal Laker season ticket holder, spending a lot of money, just bashing Russell Westbrook. And I turn around, I'm like, you understand this guy's a first ballot Hall of Famer? He's like, he's killing the team. I'm like, killing the team? You got issues. It ain't Russell Westbrook. I don't care how they portray it to be. It's not Russell Westbrook. He's been a pro everywhere he's gone. And for some reason, he's got a bad rap. And, and people have ran with it. And I'm sitting there defending him, and they think, he's your friend? No, he's not my friend. I know him, but he's not my friend. We're not friends, but I got respect for him as a former player. And I know how the narrative can go once it gets some traction. And, and they were killing him. And everybody's killing him other than the folks that coach him and plays with him. They love him, whether it be the role player or the star, star players that play with him. Rave about him as a pro as a guy that cares, as a guy that, that, that that's impactful, as a leader. And he is a guy that went to Ty Lue and said when, 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 when everything was falling apart for the Clippers, take me out the starting lineup, bring me off the bench. I believe that it, it'll spark us, and I'm fine with it. That's a guy that's all about winning. And I give him a lot of credit. And he's a guy that I take my hat off to, and every time I see him, it's nothing but love. But that Clipper team has a real, real chance because they got a bunch of players – Harden, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Russ off the bench, Norm Powell, that's comfortable scoring the rock when it matters most and can put a defense in a difficult position and can create offense. Now, they buy in on the defensive end and continue to gel more and more, lights out. They got a real chance. And Ty Lue, like you talked about, doesn't get enough credit, but he is as good as it gets at that first chair in the league. No, I was looking at the uh, I was looking at the top assists all time. You know Westbrook is gonna gun you down. He's reaching for you. He's about seven right now. Let me tell you something. He's on your back, man. Let me tell you something. I humbly submit to you. I left the game as the second had the second most assists in the history of the game, and I couldn't believe it. I mean, I I couldn't believe it. It's truly an honor. The only thing I thought about it because you know somebody somebody's gonna pass you. It doesn't matter. I only. The only thing I thought about, I don't want a buster to pass me. If you pass me and you're great, yeah. you only make it. I'll be like, yeah, he, he, like Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook, all these years later, he's just he's going to pass. He's going to think about what you just said. A nappy-headed kid from Brooklyn and Queens, New York, you telling me that Russell Westbrook is going to pass me? I'll be like, what? Going to? He should have passed me day one. I should only have, I should have zero assists in the NBA. But guess what, though? 40 years later, that rookie record is still there. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. No, that's right. That's right. You deserve your respect. You nah, did your thing, Dad. Nah. did your thing. I'm only serious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, looking at the West, it's so tight, man. Every game every game matters. Who do you see coming out on top of the Western Conference? It's, it's, it's wide open. I see Denver. I see the Clippers. I see a Phoenix team that's talented. But I'm not sold on them on the defensive end. When you talk about winning a championship, you have to be willing to get in the mud. You have to be willing to do the things that are not as comfortable. And I'm not sure that they have bought in to do those things because my concern is you don't just do those things when the whistle blows and it's the fourth quarter and there's a loose ball. I have to develop the proper habits day in and day out that when that, that happens, it's, it's instinctive to me to dive on the ball. It's instinctive to me to, to run to the lane and take the charge. I don't have to be told to do it. We've been practicing and preparing for this moment where it happens, and I'm not sure they have developed the proper habits to do just that. And then there's some teams getting hot. You look at the Warriors. They, they're getting hot. You look at a Sacramento team that obviously had success, success last year. You look at the Minnesota Timberwolves. You look at the Oklahoma City Thunder. It is wide open in the Western Conference, and it's going to matter who finishes the season the proper way and gain momentum into the playoffs. I really, I really think that it's going to be those two young teams at the top, Minnesota and uh, OKC. At the top? At the top of the Western Conference, not, not in the playoffs. Oh, okay. At the, when the season is done. What first, does that matter? I mean, what, first place is going to be – what you mean? What does that matter? Who's there at, at the end, at, at, at the end of the regular season? I want to know who's going to be there – when it comes playoff time, you you riding with those told, two young no, teams? No, 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 no. My, of course, I got to go with Bron. I, Lakers first, and then I, I want the Clippers to win. Okay. I want the Clippers. I I can't I can't get past that storyline, man. It's a, I love I love the. Clippers. I got, you know what's funny about you? Hmm. 
you'll like a team, and then when it, when they get eliminated, you'll be like, I like the Kansas City Chiefs. What you mean? Who, does? not, I mean, that's not who true. doesn't? I mean, you, you want to That's not true, man. That's not favorite. true. No, you want the favorite. That's not true. That's not, you went from New England to, to Tampa Bay with I mean, Brady that was, Switch. That was Tom. So it's not okay when I go from Cleveland to the Lakers? No, there's, there's not. That's Braun. No, no. I, I just said it. You went from the Seattle Seahawks to the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean. I never I never was a Chiefs fan. I cheered okay. for the Chiefs in the, in the oh, Super Bowl. Okay. I'm still a Seahawks fan down to the core, you know. Okay. We'll win another 10, 15 years. We'll be back. Don't worry. We'll see it. <laughs> so Draymond, he was in the news this week. He had, had some wonderful things to say about you. Let's play that clip for a second and just hear what he had to say. But where I do give Mark credit is the confidence that he instilled in us to be okay with being us. The confidence that he instilled in Steph to be like, like I, I can remember vividly conversations him like, no, nah, dude, you the baddest dude on the planet. This is before Steph Curry's an all-star. Bro, he said Steph and Clay were the best shooting back where we all was like, is he crazy? What's wrong with you? Everybody though. Absolutely. <laughs> we're in meetings, we're in the locker room, we're in practice. And he's like, dude, you're the baddest dude on the planet. And I'm just sitting there like, this dude's you really telling him he's the baddest dude on the planet. Right. Clay Thompson, like, Clay has no conscience. Most coaches would have essentially forced him to have a conscience. For sure. Mark Jackson fed that, like, no, nah, dude, you don't think shoot. Like, what, what are you thinking about? Shoot the ball. Right. And so what Mark instilled in us allowed us to become that. Your name comes up a lot when coaching jobs open. The Nets recently have a, have a job opening. What's your reaction to Draymond saying things like this about you? It makes me feel good, being honest. Um, haven't had another, cop, another coaching opportunity for over 10 years, but you can't take away the impact and the success that we had. And I say we. I include everybody, ownership, management, players, assistant coaches, strength and conditioning, trainers, everybody had a played a tremendous role in it. Uh, when you make comments like that, it makes you feel good. Uh, because at the end of the day, better than buying me a car, buying me a watch, just tell the truth. Tell the truth. And to hear the words from a champion, a four-time champion, talking about what happened before they were champions, and the small role that I played in it, I'm honored and thrilled. I'm honored and thrilled. You think about it. When we took over that job, they made the playoffs, I believe, one time in 19 years. Since then, they're four-time champs. And Steve Kerr has done an incredible job. He's an all-time great coach. But the foundation was laid by a lot of different players and a great, great staff of people that worked at Tails All. To think I played some sort of role in that. You think about it, 10 years, there's four championships from the, from the Warriors and one championship from my associate head coach, uh, my assistant, my lead assistant coach who was Michael Malone with the Denver Nuggets. So that's five championships that, that some, something, whether it's just a, a shell drill, that, that I, whatever we did, uh, it's, it's an honor and a privilege. And I'm, I'm humbled by the response. And I don't take it for granted. When, because it's easy, if, if I was a bust or a bum, it's easy to get in the choir and say that. I truly appreciate it when somebody gets on the front line and, and shames the lies that are spewed. Um, and I'm forever grateful. But more than winning is the relationships. I look at those guys like they're family, and I'm proud of what they've been able to do. And um, look forward to... to, to uh, one day going to a Hall of Fame ceremonies for a bunch of them. I think one thing, first off, that was that was beautiful what Draymond said, and it's the truth. Sitting sitting watching you, when you first got to the Warriors, Steph and Clay are not the Steph and Clay that we know today. And seeing you speak life into them, speak life into situations, and just encourage to that level is almost unbelievable for me to see it come to fruition and see Steph be the greatest point guard, arguably, of all time. Um, it's almost unbelievable. I tell you what, I was privileged to, I really believe this. I played 17 years in the NBA. 
and drafted in 1987 by the New York Knicks. Our first head coach is the legendary Hall of Famer, Coach Rick Pitino, who we talked about. If he's not my first coach, there's no way in the world I play 17 years. He birthed something in me. He believed in me. And if you put me to a lie detector test in 1987, as we're in the Madison Square Garden playing against the Los Angeles Lakers or the Detroit Pistons or whoever it may be, and I'm standing on one side, and you said, who's the best point guard on the court? You are Magic. You are Isaiah. You are whomever. I would say me, and I'd pass the lie detector test. And I know it's not true. But his greatness had me convinced. He instilled something in me. And I learned right then and there. If you could do that, it has to be some truth to it. You got to have something to work with. I can't just say, you know, you can't say Mark Jackson's the greatest shooter of all time. You're a liar. I'd laugh, I'd laugh you out of, the, out of the building. But if you have something to work with, then you can propel them to get to the place they're looking to get to. I watched the coach. I'm not going to name him, Larry Brown, who's a Hall of Fame coach. <laughs> who's a Hall of Fame coach. And I love him. I played for him twice. In Indiana, I played for him with the Clippers. I watched him strip Reggie Miller, who's one of the greatest shooters that this world has ever seen, strip him from taking transition threes. He told him that they were bad shots. So as Reggie catches the pass from me, he's shooting it, not believing, but he's more so shooting it thinking, my coach don't want me to shoot this shot. And it made him uncomfortable. Imagine if he gave him a light, what it would have taken him to. And here's, a, here's a guy in the Hall of Fame and one of the true great players of all time, but it affected him. So I learned right away, impact folks, speak life to folks. Don't lie. You could you, I can find something good. You, I, if, if you said we looked at back at this show, you could see something I did that I probably could do better. We all acknowledge that. But imagine if you looked at this show and be like, man, you, you, when you told that story, when you said that, you hit it out the park. I'm coming to the next show like, yeah, I, all of a sudden I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm Walter Cronkite or something, you know, Arsenio. Yeah. You, 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 you're feeding me, but, and you're not feeding me with lies. You're making me feel good. And the things you can do, not just in sports but in life, when you deposit a word to somebody. This is good, by the way. You, 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 you're killing it. That's yeah, good. You no, that was good right there. Made me, I almost gave an offering. No, no, that was really, no, that was, it's, 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 it's so real what you're saying because it's not just basketball and it's something that you've instilled in, in me as a son. The capability, the, the ability to look in the mirror or to be, to be able to say, you know what, I can encourage myself. I can look at my situation and say it will improve. It's not just about sports. It's a mentality thing. So when you tell me about, okay, I told Steph, I saw Steph. I've played against Steph. I know the difference between Steph and the other great point guards. The fact that just a mental shift can take somebody from this level to this level is a real thing. And I think that what you just said sheds some light onto that and there's, there's kids, I, I, I work with a lot of youth, and there's children who, 17, 18 year, years old, who have already defeated themselves mentally. I remember going to high school games, three sons and a daughter. I remember going to each one of your high school games, and I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a dad that don't say a word, but I'm sitting there so discouraged and shaking my head, watching the coach, whether it be my son or somebody else's son, take them out of the game because of a mistake, or strip them of their confidence. And it's, 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 it's really, you know, malpractice, mm -hmm. and it's 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 something we have to get better at, as, as as coaches, as people in general. Accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, to a certain extent. Still be real. Yeah, still you be bring real. up like you said, be real, but it's unnecessary to tear people down, especially in this age that we're in. Social media, we're getting torn down enough, man. It's 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 time to encourage some people. Let's go to a new segment called Picture. I mean, everything is new, but Picture Time. We're going to pull up a picture. We're going to take an old school moment, a little bit of media. I want you to tell us a story behind it, all right? Absolutely. All right, so we got a picture here with you and Iron Mike. Can you tell us a little bit of behind this picture? Brooklyn's finest, one of the best to ever do it, Iron Mike Tyson. Um, f funny picture, great, great story behind it. His other pictures I had the privilege, and we'll get to it one day, 
I visit him in prison. But this particular picture, he used to have a with a friend of mine who's celebrating a birthday today, Dave Snow. We used to have a, a celebrity game at St. John's University and then at Madison Square Garden for the, uh, benefiting the United Negro College Fund. And we'd have the who's who in hip hop, acting, singing, whatever you name it. We'd have everybody come and they play or they participate. And Mike Tyson, fresh off being crowned the youngest heavyweight in the history of professional boxing, uh, showed up and he would show up and we developed a relationship. Great respect for him, tremendous, tremendous guy. Um, and this is a picture in the locker room at Madison Square Garden. I don't know why, I bet that there's no chance he still has my signed sneakers that he's holding in his hand as, as he takes the picture. But, uh, and I'm sitting in, in the picture with my young brother, Troy Jackson, a.k.a. Escalade, nice. who was a ball boy for the Knicks at this particular time. It's a lot of great memories when I take a look at this picture. Uh, and, and the crazy thing is I still look the same. I haven't aged a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, you look close. You look similar, Dad. You look similar. <laughs> That's my boy. You That's look similar. We Remember we talked about life. What happened? Speaking life in the fall. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're looking good. Yeah, I appreciate it. Looking like, yeah, what's this? Yeah. 19, you looking like 1987. <laughs> Let's do one more picture. Absolutely. Is that cool? Yep. We got to take our time with this one because there's a, there's a lot of legends in it, man. I can read the uniforms. This is Magic Johnson's All Star game. So, what's going on here? What 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 year is this? That this is, picture looks, this is vintage. I'm the worst with dates and times and all of that, but I know specifically because because I'm sitting in there with greatness. That that had to be the summer of 1988, uh, Midnight Summer Magic. Magic Johnson would have basically an All Star game, and I mean, there's guys that put on charity games and All Star games and benefit games. It would be a who's who on both sides of the floor. Layup lines with. Larry Bird, Dominique Wilkins, Charles Barkley, Michael Jordan, anybody who was an A-lister in the league, it was as good as the All-Star game, if not better. Sold out crowd in the forum, parties, functions, auctions, everything. And it, it was absolutely incredible. And this picture is sitting on the bench. My team was loaded, by the way. I this is this is what makes me pinch myself. And I'm being this is this is not fake humility. Me, a slow kid. Couldn't shoot, couldn't defend from New York City, sitting on a bench with Reggie Miller, Michael Jordan, and Magic Johnson in the forum. Are you kidding me? This, that's, that's straight out of one of these things do not belong. And, and that's why when I look at this picture, I, I, it's, it's unbelievable what a orange basketball could do for you and how far it could take you. I'm sitting there with first ballot Hall of Famers and absolutely – Legendary all-time greats. You put a team together, you are starting that team with Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan. Was this the same? Was this the same? I vaguely remember. Was I alive when this picture was taken? I vaguely you remember. Were you alive things. in '88, man? No, this was in '88. That's '88. I just said. You so never... when did you go on the tour? It was another another tour thing that you did with Magic Johnson that I was yes, on the no, bus. Yes, right. was... You, you was, you oh, so no, oh, no, now you remember? No, no, I remember. No, I remember that, but I don't, you oh, wasn't around in '88. Oh, remember... Obviously, I was. Y'all segregated imagine in this my, photo. I was definitely me, not around. No, Are you kidding me? Imagine me talking about that. Was I around in '35? No. This boy, looks God. like <laughs> this picture looks like '35, Dad. This y'all look. No, what this, uh, the funny thing is you talking about Magic Johnson put together a team where he went and toured and played against the military base. Yes, and, that's what and, it was. And, and we went and traveled all around and played different games against the military, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. And uh, we put on great performances and we fly back and come. And the funny part about that is I can remember an NBA player, halftime, we're trailing the military team. And Magic shows his competitive. And it, we, we all and I, and I, we all retired. Magic comes in and chews everybody out, and then benches the starting center, who was an NBA former player, sits him out and says, "I'm now starting. Mark, you handle the point. I got the two. We're gonna win. We wind up winning the game." But Magic showed his mama mentality, like no nonsense. This is fun. It's for charity. We're winning games. We got some great stories, man. Yeah. I tell you what, though, it's been an honor. That's number one in the books. Some incredible stories and so much more to come. Let's take another moment to shout out our, our sponsors. You gotta pay the bills. A reminder of our great partners at Underdog Fantasy. Click on the link in the description below 
to participate in their great fantasy sports games. We'll definitely get some of my dad's picks in the, in the near future. So log on and put in that promo code MARK, that's M-A-R-K, to get up to $100 matched. Thank you so much for tuning in to the very first episode of The Mark Jackson Show. I'm Mark Jackson. That's Blue. Thank you, Cam and Mace. Thank you, Underdog Fantasy. Salute to all of you. Until next time, blessings. <laughs>